The French did a test of 400 cell phones bought off the shelf. Nine out of 10 cell phones failed to pass the current European standards. Can you explain that in more detail? I can, actually. From a manufacturer's point of view, it's really hard to be precise in the transmission. In fact, the cell phone transmissions, as you point out, were far greater than the standards. Some level of that diversion from the standards is acceptable, by the way. And so what was also true about that was that the manufacturers were building transmissions that were not um, governed to, to ex not to exceed those levels. So it's true. Same thing in the U.S., by the way. I don't know if you, you, you know, in Chicago, um, there was a local paper there that took a dozen phones. They took them off the shelf, and they found some of those phones to exceed it by multiples. Um, and so that wasn't totally surprising. What, 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 but by the way, uh, uh, the FCC allows a, a phone to drift by 10 to 15%. So rather than 1.6 watts, it can be 2 watts and still be in the standard. These that they found were higher. Um, the uh, FCC actually responded recently with uh, their own test results. What they did was they went to all the manufacturers and they said, give me one phone. Give me one. Now, they also claimed that they went and they bought, bought others. But their test results, where they identified their testing for particularly serial numbers, they only had one. Um, so I used to run test lab uh, testing for all systems. I'm not sure I would have asked the vendor to give me the one that I think represents their product. Because there's a potential for that to, they could be playing with us a bit. And I would have bought them off the shelf randomly. FCC did not do that. Recent scientific publications have shown that electromagnetic fields affect living organisms at levels well below international and national guidelines, meaning the limits that governments have set. These effects include cancer risk, cellular risk, increase in harmful free radicals, uh, genetic damage, structural and functional changes of the reproductive system, sperm damage, decreased sperm, learning and memory deficits, neurological disorders, and negative impacts on general well-being. I think we've touched on some of these. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah, I, I want to reinforce a point. We talk about the cell damage. In the clinics today, they're not seeing excess of cancers in the clinics. They're seeing the emotional changes in the clinics. They're seeing people who have been exposed and having body response. That's never been experienced in the clinics. You can have a, I'll give you an example, you can have a doctor uh, and you can say, I have a headache. And they say, take two aspirin. When the, the real reason you have a headache is because you're sitting next to a router. In fact, it's what's interesting about that is I had one clinic practicing physician call me. And we were talking, and he was telling me how he has one uh, of his, um, the people in his office, using screens all day, has, having dry eye. And he, and he said, like, you know, I treat her with drops, and I've been doing this for 10 years, and her redness is temporarily reduced. And I said, why do you think that it's dry eye that's not driven by the job she does? And I said, have you considered shielding the blue light from the screens. And 
He said, no. And so I said, I'm going to send you glasses. Have a wear them and see what happens. Got the glasses. Two hours later, her eyes were completely clear. Two hours. And it's been clear ever since. She had this chronic condition for 10 years. It was from the electromagnetic radiation uh, that she was receiving. In other words, as I, as I started answering the question, I'm not worried about the cell breakdown. It's there. There's no question about it. I'm worried about the quality of life. It seems to be impacting our, uh, and we're seeing more and more in the clinics. Is using a cell phone in cars more dangerous than in your house? The answer is yes, and, and I'll tell you why. When you use a cell phone in a car, and the signal's trying to get out of the car, it's hitting the metal. And that's referred to as a floating ground. So it's hitting the metal, and it can't find the cell tower. It's looking for the cell tower. So what does it do? It modulates up to the maximum level of transmission, and that's how it gets to this, the distant cell tower. Um, and so what you know when you were in a car, the cell phone is modulated to the highest level of power coming out. If you have that cell phone next to your body, two inches, four inches away, or well, let's say one inch away, you have it in your pocket, that's a maximum transmitted level because it can't get out of the car. If you're going to use cell phones in a car, take the cell phone, put it to the driver's seat, or from the driver's seat to the passenger side, so you have a little bit of distance. So even though it's a modulated higher power level, at least you're moving some distance between the two uh, from the power source, and it makes it more safe. How effective are the different shielding products to protect us from EMFs? There are a lot of claims made by many companies. And I always suggest to a buyer looking for shielding products that they really need to see independent laboratory study with shops that know what EMF is so they can independently substantiate the claim. So I really do recommend if you're looking for a shielding product, find if that device you're buying has been tested by someone outside the company that is educated in how it should be tested to ensure the claims are being made. Um, and what I do know is some may work. I also know some do nothing. It's not even a placebo. So you really need to be careful when you make those choices.